first thing um i saw your tweet about uh you're friends with mikey varis uh, at San, yeah. uh, san diego kind of uh, how you know coaches and knowing the coaching circle like what's your relation like coaching relationship with him and what do you think about the opportunity for him yeah mikey and i spent a little over a year together we did our pro license together okay um so we got to be very close uh, in those regards and then uh, when mikey was coach of the under 20 team that went to the world cup mm -hmm. um obviously i had brad and craig um paxton jack and, and uh, quinn here so got to spend quite a bit of time just even talking to him about that um when he went to the national team he took over uh, as an assistant coach, but his job was transitions. Mm -hmm. And so um, he called me since we're such a big transition of club and organization, yeah. talked about the principles of transition and implementing some of those things. And so Mike and I have been uh, been in, uh, in contact and since about early 2022 and have built you know, a nice relationship. And so really happy to see him get this opportunity. He was assistant at FC Dallas before. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it was Nico Estevez at the time. And, and now he's got his own opportunity. So uh, he's worked very, very hard for it. And like I said, when you do something like a pro license together, and there's only about 10 of you that are mm -hmm. in a single uh, uh, cohort uh, per year, you, you get to know somebody pretty well and, and get close with people. And um, Mikey's one of the good ones, so I'm really happy to see him get this opportunity. Have you talked to him about since he got the announcement? Um, so I'd heard about it beforehand, mm -hmm. um, texting him unofficially. That yeah. I said, this is an unofficial text. <laughs> and, he's, and he said, thanks for the unofficial <laughs> Congratulations, and then when he got it, I text him again. That's um, cool. But also, you know, we've just kept in contact, uh, but haven't really spoken. I haven't had a chance to talk to him. He's got a lot of talking oh. he's doing right now. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. So, uh, Inter Miami match, um, you know, you guys tied it up and kind of went down late um, and then kind of made a charge there at the end. Um, what's your overall thoughts on the game? Yeah, um, it was the second game in four days for us. Mm -hmm. So, I think we rotated rotated four of our front six in mm -hmm. that game um, with, and of a winning team that we right. rotated. But at the end of the day, I think it, we still want to build these guys up for a late season run. And so um, I think I'd be awfully hypocritical if I didn't do things like that, even when right. the stakes were high. So we rotated our group and we weren't quite as sharp as we were on uh, Wednesday at Carolina, which is natural too, with mm -hmm. a little bit of heavy legs, but um, did well to get back into the game. Um, probably didn't create enough in terms of clear opportunities going forward in the final third. Um, but I was pleased, again, with the resiliency of the group. You know, we fell behind, gave up another goal um, on a penalty, and then still found a way back into it and almost tied it up at the, at the very, yeah. very end again. So, um, like lessons learned for a lot of the guys, opportunities in minutes for a great number of the guys um, and the idea is that we're continuing to focus on each of their their pathways and not just the team getting the results it would have been easy for me to roll the same team out again right on Sunday but um, I think the idea is that we're prepping this whole group and hopefully we have more contributors now down the stretch because we make these kind of decisions during the season right and speaking so speaking of that that was just my next question has anybody because we've been you've been rotating people out due to you know breaks yeah yep. yeah we've talked about that but like these last two games with these rotations has any of the younger kids that have come up through the academy vice versa have really stood out that kind of like hey these guys might be down the road vying for some starting more starting minutes yeah i think the three that are with us today have, have probably uh you know shown that they're capable of playing at this level mm -hmm. it's jameer johnson kellen and uh Zach Mashadimos, mm -hmm. the three of them have really, uh, and they've all been rewarded with it, with starts mm -hmm. and opportunities and more playing time. And, and you know, Kellen's got a couple goals that he's contributed at this level. So the three of them have been, I think, uh, from the academy, the, the guys who have, have really come in and made the most of their time training with us and obviously been rewarded with some playing time. I'd be remiss to ask to saw Jose Riasco's back. Mm -hmm. Um, how's he doing training wise? I'm sure he's catching up from yeah. his loan. Uh, anything been standing out with? No, he's doing really, really well. His fitness levels are obviously uh, uh, pretty far behind. He's really mm -hmm. in preseason mode. Um, we've got to kind of get him going though, because if we're going to be able to utilize him, now is the time to start getting him going. So you'll probably see him get some minutes here in the near future. Mm -hmm. He's been in with us for about two weeks or so, I think. Not really sure exactly, uh, but we've been away so much, so right. we haven't quite. You know, we did two road trips uh, to uh, Carolina and Miami last week. So um, for for us, he's 
he, he's another weapon and another body. So we're uh, really happy to have him back. And he looks great, cons all things considered, that he hasn't done a whole lot in the last mm -hmm. six weeks. Um, but the hopes are is that we can build him up into match fitness here by the time we have the playoffs. Excellent. So um, I'm going to be talking to Gavin here in a little bit. Just talk about Gavin Wetzel's season as a whole, because, you know, last year really – I don't think he played at all last year, but this year he's kind of gotten some starts, kind of building, scored some goals. So like, yeah, we spent most of our last season. Um, so with the with the uh, key 17s, mm -hmm. um, and then it's been a process for him. You know, I think Gavin is like a Swiss Army knife in a lot of ways. He can he can play the right back, he can play the center back. Mm -hmm. um, the minutes are always hard to come by when you've got Neil Pierre and Bethany Makanya and Frankie Westfield, Jimmy Berdicia. We were all contracted professionals, and so uh, Gavin came in, and uh, really it was a, a, a big jump when he first came in, and little by little has gotten better and better and better. Um, and I think when called upon, especially in the game, I thought on Wednesday, I thought he was our best player mm -hmm. uh, at Carolina. He was outstanding, and he'll never get the plaudits for it, and people won't recognize it unless you know our group and you realize what we're asking our guys to do when Neil Pierre's away, and you know. Uh, we've got some minutes restrictions on guys, and then all of a sudden you're like, who's this Gavin Wetzel kid? Uh, but if you're around the group, you, you know who he is. Um, when he's called upon to, to play a big role, he's more than capable of stepping up and playing a big role. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the development of the academy and, and the pressure situations that they're put on there, um, but also his willingness to come out here every day and compete hard, because it's hard to be in the second team. It's hard to be in the second team and, and not get minutes. It's hard to be in the second team and you're in that like kind of that gap between finishing in the academy and now moving into a professional team, um, and you're not sure if college is your pathway, if professional is your pathway, and it's just to stay straightforward, stay motivated, and realize that you can focus on the process. Results will take care of themselves. He's one of the perfect examples of process versus results because every day he comes out, he works his hardest, he tries to apply what we're coaching, and then he goes into the game and he stands tall in the biggest moments. And, uh, we understand they're not always going to be perfect, but he was pretty close to perfect against Carolina. And then, um, final question, you know, you got now three games. You got NYCF C2 coming up here. Obviously, they had that result against you guys on the road. What do you see from them still? Um, and then what's your focus going to be with this club these last three games? Yeah, I, I would say as far as NYCFC goes, that, that game was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not a whole lot we can take from that. I do remember that was a game we had Frankie Westfield on minutes restrictions, and he had to come out because mm -hmm. he was going – being caught up with the first team and end up losing that game in the last five or ten minutes or so. Um, and, you know, Frankie's a big piece of what we do, obviously, and so missing him at the end was critical. But um, we probably – I don't even know if we look at their recent results in, in ours, per se, because they played without a couple guys that were in Japan with Neil. Um, and, and so they were missing some players as well. But I, I think they're no different than we'll look at the Atlanta and the uh, – Chicago game. Uh, we've never really put the result ahead of, you know, the day to day. Um, I even said to them the other day, just focus on, focus on the, the re process. The results will take care of itself. I'm a big believer that you'll get, you'll pretty much get a result that's indicative of what you do prior to the game. No matter, uh, uh, you can't just turn it on on the game day. So we'll just continue to focus on the competitive nature of our training session, which you got to see today mm -hmm. was was pretty yeah. high. Yeah. Um, and, and we're happy to see that we're missing a ton of guys that will play in this game um, that are over in the other field there right now. Um, but we still prepare the same way, and these guys prepare the same way every time. So um, we're just looking forward to competing and going out and letting these guys, from a coaching standpoint, go out and express themselves and do the best that they can.